about how this came to be. Yeah. Um, so one of the things that I have enjoyed so much at Wesley is the opportunity to um, host uh, guest artists of all different um, different dance um, and movement arts and um, collaborate with all kinds of people over the years. And um, the Lee Center has certainly made this possible and dance has flowed into every nook and cranny <laughs> of the seminary. So we've been able to hear many voices. Um, so this offering this afternoon um, came into being because um, I, had, I had heard Faye was going to start the art and religion, art and theology program um, <laughs> last winter and I uh, was very excited about that. Went to Josie, said, how can we partner with Faye? <laughs> and um, had wanted to bring both of these uh, wonderful dancers uh, and colleagues into my class at the seminary and then Deborah said, um, why don't we do it as a forum instead and broaden the audience. So um, that's how we came to be doing this this afternoon. Um, uh, Faye is going to, we're each going to tell you more about our work, but Faye, um, just in brief, directed the Ebenezer AME Liturgical Dance Ministry for 14 years. She is the founding director of Ruach Worshiping Arts Ministry and also currently serves as the executive pastor of Without Walls Christian Church International. Um, Josie, longtime collaborator and now uh, dance faculty at Wesley as well, um, has been a teacher, choreographer, and consultant in liturgical dance for many years and previously directed in the spirit of liturgical dance ministry at Westphalia United Methodist Church, and she completed the demon in art and theology earlier this year. Um, I have been teaching <coughs> sacred and liturgical dance at Wesley for about 10 years, and um, consider myself um, as a, to be a teacher and a, a choreographer and a facilitator and a translator of dance. All three of us are um, alums of Wesley, and have, <laughs> as we know, and have been uh, working working in the field for a long time. Um, so the way that we structured this and what we want to do this afternoon, um, we ha we have met a couple of times during the fall and have been sitting with uh, what you know. What do we want to offer in terms of? dance at Wesley. We wanted to find a connecting point within dance that was able to address the deeper layers of the incarnation and vocation and um, faith. And so uh, we weren't that interested in just sort of say, you know, plugging dance for the church. We were interested in finding <laughs> some deeper meaning of, of this. Um, and so, you know, really seamlessly and quite organically, um, the idea of embodied biology captured us and we have met a couple of times um, this fall and have designed this actually a little bit like a workshop or a panel. So, um, us into the next thing, um, but the topic is embodied theology, um, why is it relevant, and in just a minute we're going to do a little bit of moving and then we're going to talk about how this concept frames our work and each of us is going to talk a little bit about our work. Okay? So to begin with, we want to start with a movement of the Ash of Creation to join us. We have um, an embodied prayer that we do with movement. And when we first came together last week, we rushed in together, sat down in three chairs. Let's do what we did. Without thinking about it, we just plopped down in three chairs and did this and did this. And there was <laughs> such a rush of what the Holy Spirit or what we felt God was doing just in this. And as we sat there for a while, we realized that as we tackled this thing in body theology, God was speaking just in that movement. And so we wanted to begin that way with you all. And so we're going to go through a little embodied movement that we're going to ask you to participate in. Nothing hard. We're just going to ask you as she sings, Hallelujah, we all familiar with that, right? That's comfortable. 
Hallelujah, we're going to ask you to in community, go as high as you can. So other people are responsible for making sure you stay up there. Okay, it's not your fault if you don't. All right? <laughs> and then we're going to ask you to come back for the second time to sing the song and you mean that. So right here, your community is responsible to make sure that you stay. You can rock.
itself in a variety of ways, and you will hear some of that in a, um, in a, in a few moments. Um, and so, so what Greg Allison also said is um, that with embodied theology, we know that theology is the study of thoughts about an acknowledgement of God. And when theology is paired with, with embodiment, which is again the normal state of human existence, embodiment becomes theology. So we talk about all of these things that's related to theology, but a lot of times we neglect our own body. And as dancers, we communicate, as, as Catherine so eloquently said, we are translators through movement. And many times, we neglect our body, or we don't give it any second thoughts. You know, you said something about feeling, I'm, I'm paraphrasing, you were constricted through your movements because of what you were wearing. You know, you were feeling bashful. And, and, and sometimes when you don't understand our bodies to be what God has called them to be, it can hinder us and restrict us from being in our normal state of being. Now this is, that's Josephism right there. Um, <laughs> but that's kind of how I have been able to deduce embodied theology, not really being in the normal state of existence. Dependent, you know, and, and, and our normalcy is very different from someone else's as well. And as I take, um, I'm paraphrasing Sharon Ringy, um, you know, there's a, a, a Kendall and Beverly and, and, um, uh, and Amy um, Odin, you know, there's always a text within the context. And if we don't acknowledge our normal state of existence, then that can, then we're not living in our fullest potential. As dancers, as artists, as preachers, as teachers, as theologians, etc. Um, also wanted to bring to your attention um, this chart that is before you. This is a flow chart that we kind of came up with, and um, and, uh, and and Faye is the is the uh, architect of this um, of this chart, and she just kind of put all my thoughts together. But um, I'm gonna have her go a little more into what the chart was. But um, but this is um, some thinking points as to. How we how we articulate and see divine theology, you know, why is it relevant? Um, and so I'm gonna let. Okay, why is it relevant here? Uh, these were some thinking points, just in terms of reflecting the gifts of the spirit in my theology. You can reflect on that even deeper. Um, why is it relevant? Because embodiment as ministers for the Department of Dance is our normal. And, and so when I say it's our normal, I'm talking about those who feel called to any ministry of movement, ministry of dance. That's how we process. If we're sitting at work and we're just like wringing our hands because the boss is getting ready to tell us we didn't do a good job today. We're going to sit there and be wringing our hands like this. And that's going to be the choreography for something mm -hmm. more Probably because it's going to be God telling us, yeah, what are we doing right here? What is that? And it's, you know, so that's the way we process. So that's something that uh, we bring that can benefit all callings. Um, and it says here, what we bring, another thinking point that we want you to take away is that we bring an attunement to listen to our deeper selves. And that can happen in poetry, it can happen in the painting process, it can happen with others. But this is just another tool of being able to tune in, especially into that embodiment uh, piece, the dwelling of the spirit, the body, the body all together. Um, and then the last one is we are healing, this is a thinking point that we all came up together. Uh, with, if we are healing the polarizations within ourselves, meaning breaking down the walls of us thinking, okay, over here, I'm in my intellectual hat. Right now, I'm going in my prayer closet because I'm in my holy hat. Now I'm going over here and I'm in my other, but always in tune to be together. If we can heal that within ourselves, the thought was that I mean, Catherine articulated it, and it can grab my soul because it connects very much to my specific calling. Um, how much more are we prepared 
to heal the, and I put here, destructive polarizations in our world. Because polarizations in themselves are not necessarily destructive, but there are some destructive polarizations. So we'll, we can talk about that. So these are some thinking points and some things that we would like to talk about a little bit here through our individual paths. Have you think about even further and come back, ah, guess what I thought about and help us even as we are exploring this topic. Down here, we didn't want anybody to think that because we are dancers, right, <laughs> <laughs> that there wasn't something here for everybody. So I think that's why we decided to do have an overarching thing. Why is this relevant? Did I speak to the charts? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Are you? I don't know. Oh, okay. Well, and I also think it's just um, uh, key to lift up that in Scripture we are not separated in any in any way, shape, or form. So um, we know from Hebrews, Hebrew Scriptures that there isn't a body and a soul. There, it is a, it is one being. So just. Um, make that also key point in how we're, how this definition of embodiment um, is. So, um, can you want to talk a little bit about your work? My work? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> are, are you I have play? No I don't know where to start. Um, <laughs> I think it's when we, when we were coming together with everything, um, when I was thinking about embodiment, it, it, it became to a, a touchy, I guess a touchy subject for me when I was, um, when I was working on my, on my thesis. And, you know, when, um, when you're working on your doctoral thesis, you have to come up with a theological concept. And so I had been thinking about the incarnation um, because it's kind of a, a, a very natural progression into creativity. Um, with the word being made flesh, and as I was um, as I was you know digging deeper in my studies, um, you know when you're writing your paper, you know all of your all of your notions can be literally get thrown out the window. I mean Deborah kind of like, <laughs> I was just kind of going cray cray, you know, trying to figure out where where is my brain going. But I began to see that there was not there was not a separation between the body and the spirit. And in, in teachings and in being able to teach in different um, environments, I began to see that there were people that were uncomfortable. They wanted to dance so bad, but there was something that was keeping them from dancing. And I didn't know how to tap into that. And embodiment, and under, having an understanding of embodiment really helps me to process that. And so, um, and so with, and so, now that I have, I have taught, I've been writing, and now I have an opportunity. I'm sorry, I taught in churches, um, but I've been wanting to teach in um, academia for you know for some time, and so I'll be moving into have been moving into that um, you know on that trajectory for, for quite some time. So um, um, so that is you know my understanding of embodiment, and also um, one of the speaking points when we talk about transformation. I have learned in my experience, and for me personally, how transformative movement can be. And it, it, it's a personal transformation, which therefore translates into a communal transformation as well. And so um, I'm, I'm going to hang on to this word translator. As a translator, I have been able to um, go through my own personal transformation, and, and, and my objective is to share that with, with the world of how dance can transform you. However, we have to shed notions, we have to shed um, our own inhibitions, and I think embodiment, understanding what embodiment is really about and how your body can be utilized in a way that can help shape a community for change, you know, communal or individual, is, is very key for me. So that is, that is pretty much kind of where my work was. And um, I'm getting ready to put Faye on the spot here, but Faye was my first liturgical dance teacher way, many, 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 many years ago, my very, very, very first. And so, um, so yes, yeah, so I just have to put that out there. So. <laughs> well, should I start now? Yeah. Um, 
I want to piggyback behind you on a couple of points. Josie just mentioned um, she encountered people who wanted to dance and they were reluctant because they felt convicted about their bodies or whatever this thing is. And there were two points that um, stood out in my mind that I thought I might want to share today. And one of them is this phrase that we have said, embodiment becomes the theology. What does that mean? And so the other one is the last thought on your graphic there, which I believe my sister Catherine coined. I said that earlier. What does it mean? Um, a guide or way in which embodiment theology, um, ministry, movement can prepare us to heal the destructive polarizations of the world. So starting with that first one, as I sat with that, embodied embodiment becomes theology. What does that mean? That led me directly to the word of God, to the creation. And as I thought about in that first and second chapter here in the creation, um, in Genesis, where it says, then God said, let us make a man in our image. He's already saying, God is already speaking, I'm going to create something, a man, and it's going to be in the image of a community, not a one, a one thing, or something that's, 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 that's so one-dimensional. It's going to be created in our image. So that right there already speaks to this uh, embodiment, which we said earlier, is our normal state of existence. Even though we, life, our culture, whatever it is, the environment of life, moving is we tend to keep things separate for whatever it is, you know, to be able to operate, maybe function, get the job done, or whatever it is, we tend to keep it separate. So I went back to that when I said, okay, well, here it is in the Word, it says, and, and it seems to be a, a, affirming that this is our true normal existence. And in the New Translation, the Good News Translation, I like the way it says, and now we will make human beings, they will be like us and resemble us. Again, be, they will be a way of being, a way of existing, and like us. So we are an us in our normal existence. We are the spirit. We are. And then when we think about the fact that um, later it says that God formed man and then God blew the breath into man. So right there, we see if God just wanted us to be a shape, a form, a one dimensional being, we would not have had the breath, which is the life. And so that all of that speaks to affirming and helping us here in the scriptures receive the incarnation in another way of looking at embodiment being theology, the Christ. And especially when we think of theology as thoughts of God, theology as acknowledgement of God and breath being in us, theology as the nature of God, that part of God that is in us, and that we are especially when we think about all those, those things, it affirms that yes, this embodiment is something that we can embrace. When we commune with it, when we tune into it, it becomes the theology itself. And so that's something to sit with first. Secondly, when you put that removement, then the body part of it, Incarnation, maybe all the scriptures, of course, easily comes to mind the word made flesh. God dwelt amongst us. So that means now we know he's in us. It's the breath. And we know he's around us because he became the flesh and dwelt amongst us, right? And then as we move on, and we if we can, if we can embrace that idea through the word. 
heard that embodiment is theology as we move with it and begin to accept the movement ministry. I like what one of the books that we read, Behold, it's in the day. Behold the Glory. Um, Sarah Savage said something here. She said that the cognitive tools that have been given us through our culture, unfortunately, are limited to how we need to understand God, something of that. But I wanted to see if I can find it. But if I can't, you hear where I'm going. Movement gives us another way of cognition, another way of understanding, another way that's limited, that, that, that um, frees us to comprehend on a level, a fresh level, a new level, to understand God, to understand what God is saying to us, for others to see God speaking through us. And so, with that said, I wanted to read this poem because I wanted to help if anybody was having any inhibitions about moving. <laughs> I wanted to, I'm not looking at anybody. Can I turn around and speak to the wall? <laughs> okay. And then I wanted to read this poem. I mean, poetry, but it's really helping me also with my dance. And um, this is a poem by Mary Oliver. She written in 1935. And she's writing this about the prayer. And it inspired me to write something journal something about dance and I want to share it with you and it says about prayer. It doesn't have to be the blue iris. It could be weeds in a vacant lot or a few small stones. Just pay attention. Then patch a few words together and don't try to make them elaborate. This isn't a contest but a doorway into thanks and a silence in which another voice may speak. So sitting there for a minute, I was inspired to write something else. If I can find it, if not, I'll paraphrase my thoughts. That's what I'm going to do. Okay, here it is. <laughs> About movement. My experience has been in my teaching of dance. I don't know if you remember way back then. I always wanted people to understand that it's not about your technique. It's not about dancing on. You've been at a B, uh, what is it, uh, ABT, ABC, American uh, Ballet Theater, ABT, okay? It's not about that. And so I wrote, it doesn't have to be a grand jeté on a great big stage. It can be just the way in your bed, <laughs> or kneeling, or jumping hard in a puddle of splash rain, water like a child. That's part of the point. Let me get back. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but just pay attention. Then patch a few, few movements together, and don't try to make them elaborate. This isn't a con. And then I borrow her words again. This isn't a contest, but a doorway into thanks and a silence in which another voice may speak through the movement. So as much as we can think about the movement ministry and how it can facilitate us all in this exploration of embodiment, body theology. To me, that's where, that's what I wanted to offer to us all, to take away so that we can enhance our individual callings, wherever they are. And so we can move into more dance ministry if that's where we feel we want to explore. Because we find that, I know I've heard even people who are poets and, uh, or other things say that sometimes they're learning that gets in the way and they have to learn how to put it aside and become more simplistic. Now, I was going to go to the other thing, but I don't want to go through my time, so I'll see if it's more time. I'll just say that. 
servant leaders, evangelists, worshipers, or artists, as, as there are many artists. Mm -hmm. um, so whatever the modality that you're working in, I will, I don't know if Josie or Fanny, have, if you all want to think back on that again, or um, go on. So I'm just thinking back off of it. <laughs> <laughs> it really is. It's just, it's, it's, it's a lie. Um, the, um, God, I don't even know where to begin. I just, I, I believe that, um, that the way in which embodiment has been able to translate in our individual ministries is fascinating. And, um, you know, taking away, you know, being still and listening. Um, and, um, and, that's, and, and, and for me, that means to pay attention to your body. Mm -hmm. And that means to pay attention to your normalcy and acknowledge it and recognize it. And accept it as well. Um, being able to understand dance as we talk about the modality of it and, and how that helps to translate into um, other areas of your life um, because it teaches you so much. Um, and yeah, I, I, I'm sorry, I just, um, yeah, I'm, I'm a little overwhelmed right about now, <laughs> which I always am when it comes to the world and talk about theology. I'm like, yay. <laughs> <laughs> but I just, um, I just think that, that touching in, in our understanding of embodiment, I think is just, is, is very pivotal to our understanding of the incarnation and, um, and how that translates into our understanding and, and translates into our being as artists, um, whether it is dance, poetry, etc. cetera. Um, understanding what that normal space is for us helps us to understand who God is to us as well. When the, when, when the spirit of life, movement, breath, um, meets the word, scripture, um, you know, they dance together. And so as we, all of us have been, we, we love scripture, we, we love dancing the word, and I think, you know, that is one kind of uh, collection point of when when dance meets word, and then God kind of contains the whole space. And so, just like our Trinitarian um, dance in the beginning, our prayer, you know, we're we're seeing, you know, as the word in flesh, we, can, we have seen it actually come quite alive in worship um, through movement. Um, I don't want to be a sticker for time, but I know we have said we were going to have some questions. Um, if you had some questions, some thoughts, something you wanted to share, feedback at this time, anything? Any thoughts? You don't have to. You might be just sitting with a whole lot. with the movement of the other, 
the dance of the other, because that's the uh, medium of the other, culture, ethnicity, and then bringing it back and putting it together with another other. I think we have seen in the world, you just take a look at hip hop. Hip hop movement and dance has gone all around this nation. I mean, not this nation, this world. Asian, now, you see that? It's just like, blah, 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 blah. and before I even realized it one day, I was just like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Here is a language that's speaking and unifying more than ever. So in a real practical way in my ministry, what I'm doing is using this embodiment of um, this uh, movement ministry, this dance ministry, to bring uh, people of diverse cultures together Within, within and without um, the uh, Christian, because we minister to people who are out, who are not Christians, and are listening, seeking, and wanting to come. You know, just trying to find God. Okay, just trying to find God, and we and we do minister to them. So, so in a way, it 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 does break down those polar, the the, the destructive ones that we see, and. Um, I believe it is really a way in which we can prepare ourselves for that vision of the New Jerusalem when Jesus comes back and we are all there together um, praising, praising God. I think we can do a lot of that work in showing what that looks like when we come and dance together. Because in dancing together, what I have found out in my experience is I'm building relationship. It's not really about those movements that we're doing. Now, you know, the Korean group that I've been working with for 10 years, I've seen kids grow up and then they're teenagers, the girl is over there getting her degree and this and that. And it's like I'm auntie, okay? So it's more relational. And, we, and same thing in the Hispanic group that I work with. And so it's really more about us sharing our movement and discovering God in that embodied way, we we'll just we just become together. We begin to experience God in a bigger way outside of our culture, but in a way that allows us to affirm positive polarization, if it's such a thing, okay, and break down the negative. We're trying on you. So that's one way that I use. I've also used it to preach. I will dance and move right into the sermon. Or preach the sermon and there's a point that needs to be danced and I'll, I will dance that part and then end it. Um, another practical way is in Bible study. Taking a scripture, putting movement to it um, to help us reflect and gain deeper meaning and insight to what um, that scripture is speaking to us. So those are the three ways that I used. <clears throat> mm -hmm. um, one of the ways in which I um, utilize um, conceived embodiment is when we talk about personal transformation. So when um, I'm working with uh, dance ministries, especially those groups for a long period of time, a long period of time, one of the first things that I do uh, focus on, which is what uh, Faye touched on, which is building relationships. Another thing is, is that I am um, trying to bring to them, um, and not teach them, but bring to them um, skills or, or ways in which they can understand who they are as, um, as Christians or as, as children of God. And so what that looks like, you know, um, if, if I'm, I'm thinking about um, a, a, an author that who contributed to a book that was in Doug Adams' book, I believe, uh, Dances Religious Studies, and, um, and I can't think of her name, and I probably have the wrong book, but she talked about how dance was very pivotal, it was very instrumental for children building relationships with one another. And I was able to, and, and I, when I thought about that and when I read that, I was like, this is what we do as adults, you know, we utilize dance as, uh, as a place to come together, build community, and build relationships so that we can, we can just go out and, you know, you know, not necessarily have a good time, but just kind of go out and, and be, again, the children of God. And so a lot of what my um, teaching has been in liturgical dance 
has been to kind of figure out who we are as, 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 as women, as men, as children of God. And, um, and so I'm, I'm um, not only building relationships with one another, but helping them build a relationship with themselves. Um, a lot of people that may come into dance, they have, they may find have a lull in their life or something, and, and they're trying to find something new to do. And we utilize dance as a way to help them find a new sense of being or find a new purpose for themselves. And that's how, that's how I was taught um, with the program that they had put together years and years ago. And so I've been able to take that program and um, just share it with others to help them find their new sense of normalcy. And, um, and then be able to embody that new sense of normalcy into their regular lives, utilizing movement as that. And so, um, so that is so. So that's a, a very short way of, of, of the ways in which of the way in which I am, you know, utilizing embodiment as a practical way in my uh, in my ministry. And that's been that's been very foundational in my ministry as well. I think um, the way I use it practically is, uh, is helping people find their voice. Mm -hmm. So in what I'm doing here at the seminary with um, classes, my hope is that um, people are, you know, if we engage scripture, say, physically, um, you know, that becomes a new, that becomes a new text. That become, and that becomes um, also, you know, what the person in that Full embodiment brings to it, um, you know, they're not they're not the same after that. Um, so, I think using movement um, to help people really come alive um, into their full self, I would say. And um, there's a, a young woman at New York Avenue Presbyterian Church who I have helped over the past few years find her voice and it's been it has been mainly a process of witnessing her actually she has an intellectual disability um, but she she's a gifted dancer um, but allowing her even just holding a space for her on a Sunday morning to come and move and you know I took a chart and we, we write down the pictures you know what you know what picture is that that you're creating me and I'd write it down. And so through that process of working with her, you know, she was able to actually create her uh, statement of faith and was able to graduate from the confirmation class, join the church. I mean, she really joined the church, I would say, through the medium of dance because she could not, uh, she did not have a, a, the capacity in another way to, um, to sort of stand with her classmates. So, yeah, I would say, you know, kind of fall with both of these. Um, yeah. And not to mention also the times when there's just a dance word, and that's it. Mm -hmm. And it draws people to commit their lives to Christ, to God, and change. That's another way. Just try and one day just make the whole worship service dance. Mm -hmm. Just a whole worship service dance. <laughs> and then have a few acres of what congregation rep recognizes invitation to Christ now. This is the invitation to Christ. And after they dance it, how dancers stand there to usher, I mean, to welcome who may want to come. That's another, you'll see. <laughs> Is another that has happened to is an example. Um, might be helpful to some of us. I, we didn't mention just for personal self <laughs> at home, just for so much of the process is when you're putting together something so important to first do it just for you and God. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> you know. Another practical place is just taking some simple movement and sitting in it. It may be just your favorite movement. 
it may be some movements that you think are prayerful or spiritual or whatever if you don't have a starting place, you know. And God will give you more. Just be open to what those are and just sit in those. Take seven, since that's our spiritual number for completion. Start with one, go to the next, 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 whatever you think. Challenge yourself to get seven, and you'll have two <laughs> right now. And stay in that posture and make that a spiritual practice, you know, for our, our spiritual discipline. Morning spiritual discipline and this enduring practice, what you get. Mm. Shall we close? Thank you. 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 Thank you.